Welcome to API Kitchen, where we cook up secure APIs. I'm Confident Stavely, the chef de cuisine in this unique kitchen. And today we're tackling a top security risk called Broken Object Level Authorization, or as we call it, BOLA. But to get started, let's see what's in our mystery box. Yeah. a broken strainer just like in the kitchen a strainer helps separate the good stuff from the unwanted bits and that's exactly what bola vulnerabilities are all about separating the authorized access from the unauthorized access in the apis or in your api bola or broken object level authorization occurs when an attacker gains unauthorized access to sensitive resources by manipulating the object ids within api requests it's like someone using the wrong or damaged strainer and letting unwanted ingredients slip through like in this hole in the api kitchen your endpoints are like pots and the resources they hold are your delicious ingredients but if your authorization mechanisms are not properly implemented it's as if you're using a faulty strainer like this one allowing unauthorized users to sneak in to your precious pots testing your bowler vulnerabilities is like inspecting your strainer for any cracks like this one looking through and checking if there are any holes and making sure there are no holes like this strainer i'm holding you want to make sure it's strong and effective and not faulty now let's break down the process of testing and see how you can apply it to testing your own apis if you're doing this manually step one identifying the flavorful endpoints just like Finding the perfect ingredient, we need to identify the API endpoints that handle the retrieval of resources, especially sensitive ones. These endpoints are like secret recipes that need to be protected from unauthorized access. Step two, manipulating the recipe in the kitchen. We experiment with different ingredients in the kitchen and different techniques. Similarly, in bola testing, when manually testing, we would need to manipulate the IDs associated with the endpoint. By tweaking the IDs, we attempt to gain access to resources that we shouldn't have the permission to access. Step three, tasting the authorization checks. Every chef knows the importance of tasting the dish before serving it. Similarly, in bola testing, we need to examine the response from the server. A status code of say 200 indicates unauthorized access, while 400 means the authorization checks are working properly. Other status codes like 404 or 500 might indicate errors or missing resources. They're for cooking up multiple accounts. In our culinary journey, we often create multiple dishes to explore different flavors. Now, in Bola testing, when doing this manually also, we can create multiple accounts within the API system, account A and account B. We can upload a private file, for example, to account A, and then attempt to access that same file from account B. Now, this helps us identify any vulnerabilities that allows cross-account access. Step five, switching the secret ingredients. Just as we switch secret ingredients in our recipe, in Bola testing, especially manually, we can switch tokens between accounts to see if we can bypass authorization checks by using account B's token to retrieve a file on account A. Now, you need to check this before the bad guys find out about this and, of course, cover that vulnerability. Now that we understand the process, let's demonstrate a practical example to help you understand how to manually test for Bola vulnerabilities. In our API kitchen, we always start with a manual testing approach to get a taste of how your target API will handle authorization securely. Now imagine we're securely testing an online file storage service called server, for example, where users can securely upload and store their files in the cloud. Our goal is to identify any Bola vulnerabilities within the API. As we explore the API documentation and interact with the application using tools like, say, Postman, we come across an intriguing endpoint that allows us to retrieve files by specifying their IDs. Now, this is common, right? Now, here's what the endpoint will look like. By manipulating the file ID parameter, we can test if we can access files that, you know, belong to other users. For example, if we change the ID from file 001 to file 005 in the API request, like this one, if the server responds with a status code of 200, it means we can access 
and actually retrieve the file with the ID file 005 which clearly belongs to another user. That's wrong. So to further analyze the vulnerability, we can also check the response data along with the status code. So if we receive a response with a status code of say 403, it indicates that the file is inaccessible and the application has proper authorization checks in place. However, if the response is 404 or 500, it suggests an error or that the file doesn't exist. Now, it's important to note that predictable values alone don't make an API vulnerable in Bola. The vulnerability arises when unauthorized access to requested resources is possible. That's when there's the Bola vulnerability. Another method to test for Bola is by you know, creating multiple accounts like we mentioned earlier on the application. Now, let's say we have account A representing our own account and account B representing a second account. We start by uploading a private file to account A and verify that we can access that same file successfully using the uh, appropriate API endpoint. Next, we switch to account B and try to access the file that belongs to account A using the same API endpoint. In addition to switching accounts, we can also test for Bola by you know, switching tokens. Instead of using account A token, we use account B token to retrieve the file on behalf of account A. Now, this approach allows us to see if the API mistakenly grants access to resources based on the token, regardless of the account. Here in this example, using a tool like Bobsuit Repeater, we can observe how the attack is executed. Now, keep in mind that this is just a demo and the server application doesn't actually exist. I'm using it to help you understand the concept. By following these testing techniques, manipulating IDs, creating multiple accounts, and switching tokens, you can effectively uncover broken object level authorization vulnerabilities in your APIs manually. Remember, it's crucial to perform thorough testing to ensure that unauthorized access to sensitive resources is not possible. In our next episode, we will further discuss broken object level authorization and explore ways to test for API security risk manually. Join us next time as we explore another exciting API security topic and unveil a new mystery box item. Remember to subscribe to CCNet TV and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new episodes of API Kitchen showing each Thursday on CCNet TV. Until then, keep your kitchen clean, your code cleaner, and your APIs secure.